We are so excited to uh, be back with our uh, podcasting. We took a little break, um, but we're here today to um, to talk about workforce uh, education, workforce initiatives that the chamber is working on, but also introduce what other community leaders are doing. And so we have Kevin Smith, who's the site manager for for Bobcat. Some of you may know it as Doosan Bobcat, but thanks for being on here because you guys are doing some exciting things over there. We we are. Thanks for having me this morning. Yeah. Good good to be with you. Um, so, you know, our focus, I mean, we're, we we have a workforce development initiative in, internally, obviously, like many do to, um, you know, support the roles that we have, right? And it's not a, an overnight thing, right? It's right. got something you've got to look forward to, uh, look out and reach out mm-hmm. um, with a, a long-range plan. But, um, you know, STEM is a big piece of that. Right. Our, our apprenticeship program, our internships, our co-op ships to help develop uh, students and prepare them for the roles that we have available. One thing I um, invited you out here to talk about was the how you internally created some things for yourself that maybe you weren't getting externally, or maybe it just needed to be tweaked a little bit more for what you guys, what you're doing over at Bobcat. So tell us about how you got to that place where you just, it came out of your brain or you had a, a collaborative that helped you with it. So how did y'all get to that spot? Well, typically, um, you know, it starts with a need, mm-hmm. right? And so, um, you know, one one of the needs. I mean, we, we, like again, like many industries have uh, many many needs, but uh, what we're seeing is a gap in skills, mm-hmm. right? Um, a, a gap in trades. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, we have a a, tech, a lot of technical type roles mm-hmm. that. Um, is, is tough to recruit to um, with the experience that you need to fill those jobs. And so it kind of started it started there, right? Um, and we started working with the schools just with the CTE, mm-hmm. vocational type, um, and trying to understand what's actually, what are we doing in the county, right? right. Um, and um, what's available. And so we really started there. Um, that led to, um, you know, a lot of STEM and tours and just trying to get to know the educators and, you um, um, what the interests were, um, you know, and so we've, we've learned, I mean, there's quite a, a population of students that graduate every year that um, don't have a university track. Right. And right. Oh, so I think the number's what, 70, 70% is what we hear yeah. on average. About, the, about 30% have a university track, but you know, it's less than that, that I actually graduate. finish That's and graduate. Great. And so you look at, even if it's 70%, right, just for even numbers, um, that's a big number. Right? It, it blew my mind the first time I heard it. Maybe because I'm from that generation where it was really go to college, go to college, go to college, and there yeah. weren't really other thought put into other. If, if you're not a career or college ready student, there was no other pathway that they were encouraging at that time. So now we right. have, I think the school systems have realized that there has to be multiple pathways. Right. Um, because we lost that, like you said, that skills gap, those technical, those jobs. I mean, there's a gap because there's there was nobody going to those skills. So you've got people retiring out, and you're trying to figure out how to fill those jobs, right? Right. right. Well, you know, um, one of the first things, just being a parent uh, of uh, two teenagers uh, going into the workforce, was just understanding the pathways, right? right? And what options do they have, mm-hmm. right? And so... Um, it, it was um, educational. We, we, you know, we've worked closely with Mitchell Community College, mm-hmm. with um, ISS, uh, Mooresville graded, mm-hmm. and um, just just general understanding, yeah. right? And so, uh, you know, if you go back not many years, um, it's just f- focus on the pathway so we could communicate right. intelligently, right. right? So we could um, provide the options and and, t- and talk about those and what the best path- pathways were. The other thing was just getting with the counselors and the educators. You know, we, we have a summer event. We just take a day and we... Um, roll out the opportunities and pathways within the industry. Right. You know? So y'all invite teachers to do industry tours invite, or and others, yes. educators. I yeah. think that's fantastic because yeah. if they're in education, they're not always paying attention to what's going outside of their doors because they're just focused on what they have to teach. So right. what kind, uh, what teachers have come through there? Are they always CTE teachers or could they be a math teacher? I mean, is it, how do y'all no, decide? It, it's been a, a pretty good population um, in, in, in different functions within school, right? Uh, we've had a little bit of everything. Good. And, okay. and our, our initial focus was really around the uh, counselors because, uh, you know, they're spending in the so pathway know, planning. That's right. 
Um, and That's so um, be, because it, it, we had to change the message, mm -hmm. working it, and I think there's still a lot of work to be done there, but it can't just be a university message, yeah. right? And so everyone has to, if we can get on the same page with mm -hmm. what the industry has to offer, what the needs are in industry, and then we can change that message as long as we can communicate the different pathways, right? And there's so many options. Oh, gosh, yeah. Right, so many options. It's a little overwhelming. I mean, you, you talk about your teenagers, which are now almost, they're all graduated now, right? They're all, yeah. all off doing their things. Mine are in eighth grade this year, and we're, we've been talking about high school and careers for probably a really good solid year because I feel like I know more maybe than the average person because we have all these conversations. I'm like, have y'all thought about this? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm worried as your parent, what are you going to do when you get out of the house? You know, and, and they're like, I don't know. I want to be a YouTuber and right. a football right. player. Right. You know, they don't think. Or go pro. Yeah. So getting the counselors and having them understand the students better and understanding what pathways are available for them is pretty phenomenal. Um, but you guys have done some really cool stuff. You've created pre-apprenticeships and apprenticeships. So talk mm -hmm. about how those work w within Bobcat. Yeah, so I mean, we actually started with the apprenticeship program. Um, uh, so we're in our fourth year. We have our first student graduating. Oh, uh, wow. You know, it's an 8,000 uh, hour program. So it's quite a commitment. So uh, is that over four years? That's over four years. Wow, that's yeah. a lot of hours work. It is, yeah. um, but you know, um, and we've learned a lot along that path right. as well. So we 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 created a, um, an apprenticeship in mechatronics, okay. and um, there's also uh, courses in high school, right, mm -hmm. that are aligned to that. And so um, you know, uh, a, a few tweaks, but now we we have um, students that'll be graduating with a two year associates, mm -hmm. right, uh, an AAS applied science okay. and mechatronics, and so they can take that right, and they can go on right. Mm -hmm. We we we're working with uh, UNCC mm -hmm. and um, East Carolina, okay. talking with them very closely and trying to understand their programs. Mm -hmm. um, so they have a, East Carolina's got a full online option to get a BS degree. Wow. So they can convert their mechatronics into a BSIT, and so we've created pathways in a company um, for. Uh, you know, starting at the uh, an assembler level, mm -hmm. and you can work your way up um, for a two-year associates, a tech degree, which is you know you've got service techs, maintenance techs, you've got um, uh, manufacturing engineering techs, mm -hmm. quality techs. You have um, all these different technical roles, but there's there's building blocks, right. and so we can take a two-year associates degree as an MET in engineering. And then they can go and get their four year, another two years, and get their four year degree, and they can go to an ME1. Mm -hmm. um, and from an ME1 position to an ME2, to an ME senior, to an ME manager, or to a director. I mean, you right? have a very, so very, I don't want to say sophisticated, but a very uh, logical, this is how you grow in our company. And I don't, you know, that's pretty impressive as well, because how many companies take the time to really think through, I want this for, re for a retention. For your Correct. employee retention is like, hey, you can just walk in and start here, but this is how we can help. You can help yourself and help us, and you can move all up. The, mm -hmm. And it, you have many employees that have done that, right? We have. I yeah. mean, you've been able to grow what you already have and encourage them and have them go through the different yeah. um, levels. So We have VPs that started as a co-op. So, with the company. Okay. And so um, uh, they, they do a great job promoting and, mm -hmm. and within and creating the opportunities within. And sometimes you can't, mm -hmm. right? Um, or, or sometimes you can't meet the expectations sure. of the growth that, that someone wants. Mm -hmm. um, but you have options. Right. right? And you and y'all offer that and you give the training and you give them the opportunity. What's the difference between the pre-apprenticeship and the apprenticeship program? So the pre-apprenticeship is a junior, senior year. Okay. Um, and uh, we started it out just um, as a summer program. Program. We started it like 135, 138 hours, mm -hmm. uh, just a few weeks to get some just exploration, sure. right? Let okay. us get to know you. Uh, you get to know the type of work that it is. Um, are you? Is this something you really want to do? Because it's a 8,000 hour commitment, right? Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> and so, um, and then so now we've got the summer program at 200 hours. Okay. Um, and um, they get school credit for that okay. as well. Uh, it, it's actually a one credit. Um, uh, for for those taken in summer, but if there's also a class that you can take during, if you can work your schedule out, that you can work during the fall semester and spring semester. Okay. And so you can do this year round, right? In your junior and senior year, 
Um, and those hours count toward the apprenticeship if you were to convert it and continue on, wow. right? And so we've got we've got students uh, that we're in our second year uh, with that, and uh, this we've had five students, uh, five pre apprentices, and uh, three of them are doing the uh, year round, and so they take they come in and work uh, six a.m. in the morning till ten, and then they go to school. Wow, that's pretty dedicated. It is. <laughs> it is yeah. pretty motivated. How do you? excite a student about this because you know it's hard to compete with the YouTube and the the folks that are out there doing that and all the other stuff so how what is an ideal student if I was talking about it to another parent and it came up and they mentioned oh my kid's really interested in this or you know whatever how do you how do you get them to be interested what are, what are, what are the signs that you look for whether you're a parent or a counselor and educator in some way. Yeah. I mean, what's, what's the, you, you know, we, we were looking for, and you got three different learning styles, sure. right? Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the kinesthetic, the hands-on mm -hmm. uh, learning style. Um, if, if you like working with your hands, here's great opportunity, okay. right? If you right. want to, if you like building things, mm -hmm. uh, designing things, uh, manufacturing things, um, and we just show them what the, uh, the opportunities are. Uh, and even with my own, and you know, I didn't have it figured out either. I was going, I thought I was going to be an architect. <laughs> Um, and you are an architect. It's just in a different, <laughs> in a different way, different Kevin. Way. Um, but I didn't have it all figured out. Right. And so it's really just um, giving them the opportunity to explore and see what excites right. them and build on it. And so once they say, you know, I really like doing this, then you can build a pathway and say, okay, but here's your growth plan. Because back to retention, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, some people like just doing one thing, mm -hmm. and they're happy with that. Yeah, that's okay, too. Um, what I tell them, I am for you. Mm -hmm. I want you to be successful, whatever that is, whatever that looks like. What What is it that you want to do? And just trying to understand. And with the students, really talk with the parents, too, and try to try to educate them as well on what the opportunities were. Where does this get them? Uh, with mine, mine did the same. They, I thought, they both thought they were going to go, uh, you know, play sports. Mm -hmm. um, um, and um, I go, great. But have a backup plan, What's your right? Plan, plan I want B, C, right, and D. <laughs> right. I want you to have at least a skill set. Yeah. That's something you'll have for life, and you can build on. Um, but typically, they get into it, mm -hmm. and 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 they enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot of work, right? It's a lot of work. I mean, you're you're working thirty plus hours and going to school. Um, but you know, there's there's um, students and people working out there that do a full time job, go to school at night. I mean, it's really how bad you want it at yeah. the end of the day. But um, so they have to bring that to the table. You know, we've got a thing. You know, bring the passion, mm. uh, believe in each other, and create tomorrow. That's our three things in Bobcat, and um, they have to bring it right. One thing um, you just touched on is the culture. And talking with a parent recently about their child doing something, they really enjoyed it, but they got into a situation where the culture of the business wasn't good. So it really has turned them sour on the job. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's just as important as, you know, that culture that you, you're cultivating in Bobcat is for that retention piece. So, and it's, I mean, I know you well enough, but for people that don't know you and don't know the culture of Bobcat, Talk a little bit about that because, I mean, we've touched on it, but y'all are real serious about that. You want everybody to, like you said, you want them to be happy in their job, as happy as anybody can be working, right? Yeah. But also feel like they have a way, a place to, to grow. And um, is there any other... I've met I've met so yeah. many of your folks, and they're all just really nice we have, people. We have the best Yeah. Um, you know, it's... Um, it's tough because you've you've got to make some really tough decisions mm -hmm. in business, and it people you know a lot of people don't always align, mm -hmm. and 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 there's not a decision that you make that that works and a benefit always for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, but um, number one is just building relationship, right? right? Um, and it's tough when you have so many people. How many people uh, work over there? So we've been up to 900 plus 930. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're right around that 850 to, mm -hmm. to 900 range in, in total. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it wasn't that many years ago before we expanded that, you know, we were down at, you know, 300 I mean, uh, in total. I mean, that's that's a lot of extra people. That's it's phenomenal growth, right? Three times. That, yeah. that speaks well of Aradale County mm -hmm. and surrounding counties that we recruit from and the skills that, um, you know, uh, we've never had a problem mm -hmm. 
getting good people, yeah. right? They're here. And so that's encouraging, yes. right? And it should I mean, be that's encouraging a huge, for the For economic development, we got to have the work, the skill set and the work, the workers yeah. to do the work or else we're not attracting yeah. anyone. Yeah. What would you give advice to another organization, a company, whether it's big or small, um, for that retention? What, what, would, what kind of advice would you give them about that? Yeah, you know, it's, it's um, with, with um, the age, you know, people are working, uh, longer, mm -hmm. right? And so you've got multi generations mm -hmm. uh, in there. Okay. Is um, you know we call them touch points. Is is really um, so we have a structure. We have you know uh, at, in in the shop uh, a supervisor, first mm -hmm. line supervisor type role, mm -hmm. then a lead role, and, and um, then then our employees, uh, our hourly workforce. And um, we used to have like a ratio of of one lead for every. 14, 15 people. That's a lot. And that's a lot, mm -hmm. right? And it's a lot. And we had supervisors that have over 50 people. Mm -hmm. um, and so we started looking at that ratio and started bringing that down. And we started creating more lead roles, um, trying to create groups, micro groups of, yeah. of five to six people mm -hmm. just to be that contact, right? Um, our onboarding has changed uh, okay. dramat I mean, drastically. We spend more time in onboarding. And we're not, there's nothing we do that's perfection. Correct. Right? Yeah. You're always working on it to improve it. We always have uh, room for improvement. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, the training aspect, mm -hmm. putting more time, and not just running through just a class and then, you know. Good uh, luck. <laughs> right? Um, so spending more time yeah. and, and trying to cultivate that relationship. If we don't build a relationship, you know, in the first three or four weeks, right, we have higher risk mm -hmm. um, of integrating someone in, into the plant. Um, and, um, you know, the retention is at risk. I'll say just to plug the chamber a little bit, one of the another great retention tool is um, you guys have been very, especially over the last few years, have really embraced our Leadership Statesville program, which is, you know, giving them an opportunity to not to um, y'all have to do lots of leadership, I'm sure, internally. But this gives them an opportunity to be outside of that, of those walls, see their community as a whole, make them feel proud to live here and, and understand where they live and know what's outside of the of those uh, bobcat walls, you know, and we appreciate that because those are um, not everyone can has the um, leadership development internally that that some of our larger businesses and, and um, manufacturers do. So the fact that y'all send people through is a great compliment to us that we're doing a good job. But also, I think for you to let them feel part of the community, not just part of the Bobcat community. Right. I right. think that's important to you guys. Well, it's real. It's real important. Um to build, I mean, everyone has an internal network, mm -hmm. right? But it's really important to be successful to have an external network. Mm -hmm. The chamber is an external network mm -hmm. for us and connecting people and connecting us. We, I've been so connected uh, mm -hmm. through, the, through the chamber. And I think also this, um, you know, you get you get out what you put in. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, for the Doosan, uh, you know, one of their pillars is is uh, community, mm -hmm. community involvement. And so they really stretch that. Mm -hmm. And and not just, we don't want to be just a financial partner, but we want our employees to be engaged in the yeah. community and leave it better than you found mm -hmm. it uh, and get involved. And so, um, you know, they've given us the flexibility to drive that. You know, we have Doosan Days of Caring where we yeah. take full days and our employees mm -hmm. go out and, um, you know, we, we select um, areas um, uh, to focus on in the community. And so, but our people love those days. Oh, yeah. They come back and uh, it's just great, you know, giving back or yeah. being involved with. Um, and so it's really great to see that. But that really helps our engagement. We have a whole engagement team and they are super. They do so many things, yeah. right, internally and outside. So we have, um, we have you brought to our Education uh, Workforce Committee, um, commu committee yeah, a idea of how we can in, incorporate STEM more between the businesses and the students and the schools. I'm excited about that. You gave, we had a presentation, it, it was just a couple of weeks ago, and yep. we're meeting again yep, tomorrow yep. Um, to kind of start really touching on what that looks like. Um, tell us about why STEM is important to oh, you guys. Oh, gosh. Um, you know, it reaches um, so many different types of positions um, with, with, with STEM. And, um, you know, there's just so many opportunities and we're growing. Uh, all companies are, you know, as we get into this AI technology and all the technology that's out there, um, you know, it's, it's changing. Mm -hmm. It's evolving. Very and much. so we, 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 we have to with it, right? And we have to think long term of the development of skills to be ready to take mm -hmm. on. If we're, you know, you want to lead mm -hmm. um, in, in um, uh, any market, 
right? Um, you have to be you have to be out there on the leading edge to stay to stay out there. And so you don't get there if you don't have the people right. and you don't have the people prepared for it. Um, and so um, that's an area that uh, we're very passionate about mm-hmm. and, and and growing and creating opportunities. And so for the STEM. You know, you think about that set back to that 70 percent of the students and and how do we develop them? It's really growing interest. I mean, you we are starting at kindergarten. Yeah. Right. And um, our team loves the STEM events that we do mm-hmm. with uh, with the with the younger students. Um, it's fun to watch them. It's fun to see people grow and develop. Mm-hmm. Right. Get great satisfaction out of people mm-hmm. see, seeing that growth and, and success. Um but we we are trying to create age appropriate STEM materials to drive exploration and interest, right? right? And if you wait till students are in high school, we think it's we've too, missed it. It's way yeah. too late. You know, yeah. it, there's there's robotics. We have first robotics, right? We have mm-hmm. Skills USA. We have those kinds of things. It's just a different, mm-hmm. right? Career uh, mm-hmm. um, readiness mm-hmm. type events. Um, but uh, for K through eight, right, it's really driving mm-hmm. uh, interest on what the possibilities are uh, in science and technology and using math. Um, so that's that's for us, and we're so tied with our not just it's not just around engineering. We have so many positions. Oh yeah, that, I mean, that can you have HR, you have marketing, you have IT, you right. have all these different right. elements. Um, I, you know, we, when we were having our conversation last week, we were talking about the CTE program that our Dale Statesville schools, which is, I think has come a long way over the years. It's been, it, they have really realized that they need to start younger. I think everybody's on that page. Finally, I think we all realize we cannot start in the ninth or 10th grade. So it's moving it back into middle school and even fifth grade, which is pretty great. If you think about it, I think about me as a student. I don't remember ever having any interaction with a company my entire elementary, maybe even middle school years. I mean, it really wasn't until I was in high school that those things even were brought up, right? So I wonder if this little Shannon in kindergarten, if she'd have had some sort of a STEM or any kind of an activity that would have been like, oh, I like this, instead of just sitting in a classroom and learning math and being like, oh my gosh, I hate math. But seeing the apply, how you apply it. Yeah. Would have made it. I mean, who knows? I might have been a architect. I seriously yep. doubt that. I don't like to build anything. You could have been. But I mean, but I think about every student who doesn't have those opportunities because it's just you know teachers have their they're very you know structured in what they have to learn. So I feel like it does take the community, the village, the businesses yes. to help. Div- I mean, that's your workforce that you're working through. Yeah. So I mean, that's a. If you're not going to do it, who is right? right. right. So well, I can't tell you how many dinner conversations I've had with my own and, and, you know, sitting around the table doing homework, you know, dad, this is stupid. I don't know. I'll never use (laughs) this kind of thing. So where we can connect subjects Mm -hmm. um, to uh, industrial Mm -hmm. uh, uh, opportunities and applications, right? Uh, Pneumatics, hydraulics, right? Uh, 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 Electronics, um, those kinds of things. And we connect it. It takes multiple subjects. Um, around supporting uh, the kind of skills that you need. And so where we could connect and they can actually see it applied, Mm -hmm. I think is where we win. We all win, I think. And then the students, right, oh, I mean, that's how I can use that. Great. And just so connecting, I think we need to do more of that. Mm -hmm. We talked about um, last week um, at the uh, workshop kickoff, um, science fairs. Yes. Right. And and I didn't even know if they still did them today until last week. They do. I don't know that they're, I know that they're, they're they're offered to all the kids, but my kids never had an interest in science. They did the math fairs, mm-hmm. but they never wanted to do science. So, um, but they do still have them, and they you know they're great. But how do we get them bigger and more excited? Right. You know? I, I think you know. I think the interest is there. I think funding is something. You know. Yeah. I think we've got to work with industry to partner with schools and yeah. classrooms to get them more involved, mm-hmm. create more platforms and opportunities mm-hmm. so that they can display projects. Okay. Love building things. I mean, you can with Legos or whatever mm-hmm. Tinker sets. Um, you know, bring something, yeah. right? Whatever it is that you want to build. I still remember very vividly, right, um, my last science fair project uh, and working with my dad as we, we sat around the table and built things. And so great memories there, yeah, I mean, but that sparked yeah. the interest, I All think. Right. Yeah. And I mean, you, if you hadn't had had to do this project, you may have never, you know, I think the science, we asked that question. I never participated in a science fair because I was not, I'm not a science person, 
But I did participate in an egg drop where you had to yes. figure out how to drop an egg yeah. from the roof of the school without yeah. it breaking. Yeah, so that was about the closest I ever got to figuring out stuff. And that was a lot of fun. Did your egg break? I'm pretty sure it did. <laughs> I don't even remember what I did. But I mean, I just remember how ex I don't remember my personal project as well. But I do remember how fun it was yeah. working on like strategy and figuring it out. So, well, as we wrap up, um, you know, uh, number one, I just want to say I always, you know, when people ask us about workforce and how we can get the students ready, I, you know, there's there's you and a few others that I always call and say, hey, can you talk to this business? Because they're really trying to figure out how to how to feed their industries, right? Um, because sometimes you have to do that yourself because you know exactly what you need and y'all are a great example of that. And we've been able to, and we had a meeting not too long ago with a local business that was trying to figure out how to grow his business and grow his industry because it wasn't anything that they could do through the school or it just wasn't enough. And so what I got out of that entire meeting was you almost have to kind of figure out what you need and make it happen for yourself. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then you can kind of bring the school's or the college in, and they usually will partner with you. But sometimes you just have to kind of kickstart it yourself, right? right? And then build it and then figure out, okay, this is great. How do I get the schools to know about this, the industry day tours, those, those type of things? So, Yeah, I think, I think if businesses would truly use the chamber mm -hmm. as a connection, there's so many resources, mm -hmm. right? And, and that's the thing, starting a new business is a lot of times you don't know what those resources are, right. what's available to you. It's a great place mm -hmm. to start, yeah. um, right? And, um, and you get involved, right? You meet people and, um, and, and, and it'll come, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you, everyone has needs and mm -hmm. it's just figuring out who who's out there as a resource to help you. So uh, sometimes it takes a little longer to figure yeah. out, but um, uh, we're here, we're I here to help. I have one more question because yep. this is always on my mind. Every time, we had a, every time we meet and talk about this stuff, how does Kevin Smith run a huge, almost 900 employee industry and still have time to think all these great things up? <laughs> is it well, coffee? For, first of all, yeah, a lot of coffee. No, Kevin Smith does not run uh, that does. huge organization. Um, it's just building a team, yeah, right? That's, that's what it's about. Right. Um, and Find if you right can partners. and help those around you be successful, you will be successful, yeah. right? So um, that's how we go at it. Wonderful. Well, thank you. This was yeah. great. We appreciate you being on the show today. Thanks for having me.